and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here then don't forget to subscribe down below and without much further ado, let's get on with the video. Before I start today's video I want to address two things. The first thing, my makeup. It's it's very extreme today. Um, I watched Descendants 3 last night and I fell in love with Audrey's makeup and I wanted to try and recreate it so this is my attempt at recreating her makeup. So that's this. Also I'm wearing Jeffree Star lipstick on my lips if anyone cares but I tried. And the other thing is that I will be going to Summer in the City this weekend and I'm very excited. Um, I haven't got a specific like meet and greet or anything like that um, but if you see me walking around don't be shy, come and say hi. That rhymed. Um, yeah, I'm always open for a, like a quick chat or anything like that. What, why am I rhyming right now? But anyway, yeah, that is everything I want to say, so let us get on to today's video. I have been crewing with Showmasters for the past two years now. This year was definitely harder. I worked three days of the event. I did a half day on Friday so then I could enjoy the con on the Friday evening with my friend Steffi. I then did the full Saturday and full Sunday shift. I was so tired but it was so rewarding but also so stressful and it was just this big thing. If you want to see my day kind of, Steffi did film and do a whole vlog so I'll leave that like linked on the video and in the description. On the Friday I was working the cosplay section which is the cosplay stage where if you have a costume and you have like a little performance that you want to do, say lip syncing or a little bit of acting, you can showcase your cosplay and you can do your little act and then if you win you get moved on to like the big one and then from there you go and win something else. I don't actually know what you win because I was more looking after the like featured cosplayers so the people that Showmasters invited to come and like set up and like do panels and stuff so I was basically a runner for that day. On the Saturday I was there obviously for the entire day uh, so this is a 12 hour shift. I was there someone else that was crewing was there and then also we had like four helpers. Now helpers are people that come on in the last like two weeks and then they only crew like half the days. I had many questions but I luckily was able to find out most of them myself and I kind of became the designated runner from where I was situated around the entire hall ten times. I did many laps of that place. I was on the diamond gift collection stool. Now, if you don't know LFCC and you don't know like other Comic Cons, they tend to do this. Um, if you remember when I went to MCM, I got the Winter Soldier Pass. That got me a photo into his panel front row and also an autograph and then a couple of goody things. And it did cost more, but it also gave me priority entry into the autograph and the photo so it was like quick. Um, so it was 100% worth the money because I would have spent anything to meet Sebastian Stan just saying. Um, but the same thing applies at LFCC and you can get a diamond pass to get like a bundle. So it's like a photo and a talk and an autograph and a gift. I was on the gift place, okay? That's where I was. Diamond passes have to be collected before you enter the show, okay? Before you enter the show. That message was not conveyed to everyone it seems. Someone was telling people that you could come inside and do it and then you could come inside and security would be fine with it and then they weren't and it was just this whole big like conundrum. We were getting like bits of it so I was like you know what I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this into my own hands and run. So I did at this point 10 laps from front of house to the security at the back asking them what was going on. It resulted in me doing like 22,000 steps that day so we love exercise. I met some amazing people, I chatted with loads of different people, I helped people which is something I love to do because I know how stressful comic cons can be and if I can help you in any way I'm gonna do that. And now we come on to Sunday. I worked upstairs in the autograph area and I ended up being the ticket person for Lenny James and Lee Majors. Um, Lenny James is obviously in Walking Dead and Lee Majors is the six million dollar man. I also ended up being the person that's like no photos please, no photos because these two guests had no photo signs up. And me being the Disney cast member I was, I was really nice about it. So I was being like, no photos please, sorry, no photos guys. Guys, can we have no photos? Like being really happy. And then Lenny James's security guard slash PA slash agent was like, you're too nice. You're just, you're too nice. And I kind of took that as a compliment, even though I don't think he meant for it to be. Also, at this point, I had been standing for what felt like years and my legs were beginning to give out. So I was doing like a little dance, which is something I do anyway, because my back always hurts because I was in a car crash when I was eight and it's never been the same. And about halfway through the day, I was needed in another area for half an hour. And when I came back, Lee Majors, the $6 million man, said to me, we missed your dancing and then applauded me. So, Apparently I should be more freaked out about that, but unfortunately I have never watched 
anything that he's been in so I'm sorry to Lee Majors but also I felt very proud in that moment that I'd been applauded by him and then I told my mum and she was like Lee Majors applauded you why are you not freaking out so uh, apparently it's a big deal and I'm sure it is and I feel real good about it because I just was doing it because my feet hurt and also I like to entertain people instead of just standing there like so I was just dancing I literally had pink elephants playing in my head for that entire day so me dancing made sense to me because I could hear that no one else could but I could. So that was pretty much my Sunday and it was very busy upstairs but I did get to see Matthew Lillard in the corner, I got to see Amy Garcia who are like the two people that I was super excited about meeting that weekend. I had some really good conversations with people on that Sunday about like their favourite people and how much it meant to them to be around those people which is always something that's like really big in my head because I get very attached to fictional characters and it's so cool to see that it's not just like you like there is a group of people that also feel like that I met a couple of you guys and if I met you thank you for coming and talking to me sorry I couldn't talk for longer now I'm gonna come on to the thing that probably most of you are here for because you obviously saw my thumbnail and that is that I met three of my favorite actors the first person that I met was Lana Perilla who is um, I know her from once upon a time she is the evil queen um, she's my favorite character from once upon a time and I'll insert the picture here um, I got a photo with her and she was really nice she seemed very tired and I felt very bad for her because it must be so exhausting to be that side of things and like just have to be like happy and smiling with everyone but like she looks stunning in every photo that she was taking and I don't know how that's humanly possible but she was a queen, literal queen. I then also met Amy Garcia on the Sunday, and when I say Amy Garcia is a literal cinnamon bun, I mean that with my entire being, okay? Now, I know her from Lucifer as Ella, um, and she just was so nice, and I showed her this picture and said, is there any way that we can recreate this? And she was like, yes, let's do it. And then she gave me an Ella hug, so. I think I win. And finally we come on to the last person that I met and probably the most important person of these people that I met um, and that is Matthew Lillard. Now I know Matthew Lillard from growing up watching Scooby-Doo and then falling in love with Scream which is now obviously my favourite film if you don't know that welcome to the channel because you must be new um, but I adore Scream it's one of those films I can watch over and over and over again it's my favourite film and when I heard that he was coming to LFCC I immediately was like I'm meeting him I have to and I went into my photo op and he was being really nice and luckily because he's not like one of the sold out photo people like say Ian Somerhalder or Tom Felton. He had a little bit more time to spend with each person, not a lot because the photos, the way they work is in, out, in, out, in, out, but he did have more time and I still can't believe how amazing the photo was. So I walked up to him, shook his hand, um, he was being really nice to everyone obviously, literally a seriously nice guy, like just super nice, you could tell from the offset he's just nice. Um, and I walk up to him and I show him my phone. Now CJ suggested I get this photo because I was like, I want to do something funny because I don't just want the normal, like, photo. Because, like, to me, that's, like, that's everyone else's photo. I want to do something that will be unique to me. So I showed him this picture and I said, can we recreate this? Um, and he was like, sure. So he kind of stood behind me and then he did the face, um, as you can see in this photo. And then obviously I was thanking him and his response was, no one has ever asked me to do that before. Thank you, CJ. Now I have a unique photo. No one has ever asked him to recreate that moment from screen. Now there's something I need to touch on before I tell you the story of me meeting him for his autograph because it's a, it's a whole thing. If you guys watch my MCM Comic Con video, you'll have seen these pillows and you'll know that I like shouted them out being like, they're from Curious Creations, she's amazing, love her pillows. Well, she got in touch with me on Facebook a couple of months ago and was like, hey, I saw that you shouted out my pillows, people have been coming over, like, I just want to send you something as a thank you. And I was like, you do not have to do that, like, I love them, I'll share them with everyone, like, you guys will keep asking me where they're from, so I was like, I'll still do that. And she was like, I just want to say thank you, so I'm gonna put something together and you can collect it at Comic Con. I went up to the store anyway because I wanted to say hi and, like, actually introduce myself, you know? And she was like, hold on, I've got something for you. And <laughs> she outdid herself and I'm still so thankful and yes these were gifted so I didn't pay for them but like I wasn't told to say this she was like you don't have to shout me out again you don't have to do that but like I'm gonna do that because amazing service and you can get any photo you want within reason I'm sure 
on a pillow. She, she gave me these two, okay? This was one I saw at previous con and she was like, what ones would you like? And it was the first one that came into my head because <laughs> Aria was everything to me and this moment was everything. Um, and then also she wanted to give me one of Sebastian Stan because she knows how much I love Sebastian Stan. So now I have two Sebastian Stan pillows. But that leads me on to my Matthew Lillard autograph session because I walked up to him with this pillow facing him in a bag, okay? So he could see this pillow and his first response was, is that Sebastian? And I was like, okay, we're going down this route. Okay, let's do this. So I was like, yeah, yeah, it is. And then we had a conversation about pillows and how weird it must be to have like a face in your room. And I realized at this moment that I probably look like a crazy, crazy fan, but I was just like, I think I said something like, I just like, he's one of my favorite actors and I just respect him so much and like seeing his face just makes me happy. I don't know, I said something weird. Who actually remembers what they say to famous people, okay? We all just like babble, okay? We just blah. After the little conversation about the pillows, I handed him my ghost face pop vinyl and said, can you please sign this? So he signed the front of it. <sighs> he signed the front of it and it just, it, it, I'll insert a video here because this, my focus has gone weird, but he signed it with his signature. And I was like, I'm not being rushed here. I, I can probably ask him, so I was like, you probably get this all the time, but is there any way you could write your favorite quote like on the pop vinyl? So he did. So he wrote his favorite quote, which is my mom and dad are gonna be so mad at me. And if you know anything about me and my love of scream, you'll know that is also my favorite quote. So it's just super special and I need to get my protection box, but I sent it back home to my parents like an idiot. So we love that. But that's not where the story ends, okay? So he signs this and I'm like, cool. And then I think to myself, I'm gonna regret it if I don't mention to him that I have a cursed phone case of his face. I really wanna see his reaction. I knew my friends wanna see his reaction and I'm sure most of you would probably have wanted to see his reaction. So I showed him my phone case. Now, if you don't know what my phone case is, um, it's it's this, it's it's this. It's super cursed and it's, it's, it's Scooby-Doo, okay? It's from the second Scooby-Doo film and he looked at it and I could see that he was mildly uncomfortable, but not too much. He kind of went from like, what the hell is that? To like, that's funny. And he was like, that's so funny. That's so amusing. Like, that's amazing. Like, he was complimenting it. I kind of didn't want to leave it there because like, I realized at this point, I looked literally, I have a flipping pillow of Sebastian Stan's face and I have his face just on my phone case. So I was like, look. And I explained to him that obviously, if you guys don't know, I suffer from anxiety and depression and it got really bad at the beginning of this year and I needed things to make me happy. I found like amusement in watching Scooby-Doo, Scream and also anything with Sebastian Stan in it because I, I don't know, okay? I latch on to Bucky Barnes as a character. I just think he's a really good representation of like mental illness and that kind of stuff. For me, that's how I see him. I explained to him that I needed something to make me laugh and so I got this phone case because it was funny and the look he gave me was pure understanding and I've never had anyone look at me like that before but it was just he understood in that moment how much meeting him meant to me and I didn't even realize until that moment how much that interaction meant and he just took my phone and he signed it so that was just a really good interaction and now I have a cursed yet signed phone case also this was an orange also, I got it from Redbubble. If anyone cares where this came from, I got it from Redbubble a while back. Um, but it's signed by Matthew Lillard. Uh, now I'm gonna go on to the things that I bought because I know people care about seeing kind of what you can get at Comic-Con. Um, and the first thing I'm gonna take you to is Lego minifigures because I have um, a lot. I bought this case and it came today, but they don't all fit in here now. I obviously found some at Comic-Con and Steffi was there being like, just do it, just buy them. So I bought a couple. The first one I got is Shaggy here. I'll obviously put in like inserts so you can actually see what these look like. Um, this one is Shaggy. Uh, I felt it was fitting because obviously I was meeting Shaggy um, and he's just really cute and his hair's on weird. There we go. The next one I got was three pound and this is Bucky Barnes from Infinity War. Uh, he has his different arm, he has his different costume, he has his, his gun from the film. He's got his beautiful hair. He's mildly angry. Does he have a different face? Oh my God, I pulled off his butt. And the last minifigure I got was either two pound or three pound, I can't remember which, but that is Falcon because I thought you can't have Bucky without Falcon because obviously the TV series is coming next year and I'm very excited for that. But um, he's one of the ones that you can put on his arms but I do not have enough thumb strength to push his arm into his body. So he's currently armless, um, but he has his wings and I will obviously put his arms into his body when I can and when my sister is here to help me because she apparently knows how to do it 
And there's a knack, but I, I can't... I'm weak, okay? I'm weak. At LFCC there is a comic section, and this is a place for small artists to sell their work, um, whether that be comic books or whether that just be prints, like anything and everything. And myself, Steffi and her two friends that we were with were just walking down the pathway and we all saw an amazing drawing of Tom Holland as Spider-Man. So we just, we just all, I don't even think we said anything, maybe someone shouted Tom Holland, I'm not sure, but we all just ended up at this stall. And he had some amazing like Avengers artwork that was so cool and I was thinking about buying it. Then I looked up and what this guy does, and I will leave a link in the description to his Instagram, he takes Disney princesses and makes them into superheroes and horror characters. Tiana was literally Iron Man. Also, I think Anna was Chucky. Um, Rapunzel was another one that I can't remember, but it had to be done, okay? This cost me six pounds. This is obviously Ghostface from Scream, but it's Jasmine and she even has like a little genie tattoo and on her top it says Screams on Sunday and I just... I just, okay? It is Ghostface, but it is Jasmine. It's a Disney princess as a horror character. That is my brain. They are the two opposites. Disney, horror. This guy put them together. I spent about half an hour with Steffi at the Disney pin stool. I was on a mission to find a very old style pin. I didn't care what it was of or who it was of. I just really wanted like old school Disney World pins because recently I've been watching a lot of Yesterworld and Defunctland and Expedition Theme Park and they kind of go into detail about old Disney and old Disney rides and stuff. And I found this one and this one is Tom 2.0 from Interventions. So Tom 2.0 is actually Tom Morrow 2.0 and basically when you go into Epcot you have Spaceship Earth and then you have the two like sea buildings. They have like Club Cool in them, they have I think Mouse Gear and it's like that thing, right? But it was previously a place that showcased new and upcoming like designs and um, machines and just loads of different really cool things that obviously now we take for granted but then was like amazing. In 1999 they had interventions but it was just kind of a mess of different stalls and showcasing different things that didn't really have any like structure so people didn't really like it because it was all over the place. So they changed it to the road to tomorrow and they put up a little Tom Morrow robot on top of one of the like crossroad signs and he was a robot that kind of gave advice and trivia and all that stuff to the inventions of tomorrow and he also had a little tv show and if i'm correct with my disney facts please correct me if i'm not but i'm 99 percent sure i am you can find the skeleton of his robot in the guardians of the galaxy mission breakout ride over in california it was either this one or the segway around the world pin um, but then I, I kind of just fell in love with this and now I know a really cool fact about Epcot that I didn't know before and I learned all about interventions and did this little guy who was made in the same year as me, so we're the same age. And finally we're on to the last thing which I'm sure you guys predicted we would get to and that is pop vinyls. The first one that I have is one of the new Pennywises from IT Chapter 2. If you've watched my collection video you know that I literally collected every single Pennywise pop vinyl except for like a couple of the really hard to come by ones that were really expensive and Georgie without an arm. I'm still looking for him. I will find him. I hunted down every single stool at Comic Con and no one had him. They brought out new ones and I was like, are you serious? I my bank account. He came home with me. He was £10. The next three were on an offer and it was three for £25. The first one is Beetlejuice from Be Beetlejuice. Don't say his name anymore because he will arrive. Um, I'm a huge fan of this film. I love it so much and also the musical is everything and I know every lyric to every song now because I've been listening to it on repeat and I will be very excited if it comes to the West End because we deserve it here in the UK, please and thank you. And then the next two I have been looking at on Pop in a Box for a very, very long time and apparently on their website they said they weren't coming out till like November. Yeah, here we are. Um, they are the new Scooby-Doo ones. I have Scooby and I have Shaggy. Um, Shaggy was the main one that I wanted from this collection, Shaggy and the Phantom Shadow. Um, but the Phantom Shadow wasn't at this stall, so I was like, you know what, I'll get Scooby. It was very fitting to get these and I was gonna buy them anyway, so it worked out cheaper. So, d Scooby and Shaggy. But that is my update story time thing on LFCC. It was very, very stressful. I was very, very tired, but it was so rewarding and I got to help a lot of people and I hope I did help you if you saw me and you were like, oh, she was helpful, now, now you know who I am. Um, I hope I helped you. That, that's, that's my story.
um, in Balamori. If you enjoyed today's video and you want to carry on watching this face, then please do not forget to subscribe just here. Also click on my previous video just here, and here will be a link to a recommended video. But until next time, bye!